Hey guys, this is Comic Uno, and today I'm doing Comic Uno's Best Comics of the Week. This is the show where I review all the comics I've read this week in one show. We go least favorite to best pick of the week and everything in between. And before jumping into the episode, I do have a Kickstarter going on right now for a Bi Visibility, a bisexual comic book anthology, so hopefully you guys could go check that one out. And at the end of this review, I talk about the viewer's pick of the week, so be sure to leave your pick of the week in the comments. Now let's jump into this week's books. We do have 15 comic books. This is actually a, a bigger number of books they normally get for a haul. So number 15 for me this week was a $10 book and that is Fantastic Four issue 35. This is a huge book. Uh, you could see that right from the, the corners here. Honestly, this is probably about 100 pages. And it's all the main story as well, which is kind of interesting. Now the reason... Why this is a little lower than, you know, maybe some of the other books that came out this week is because of the artwork. I'm I'm not a huge fan of John Romita Jr.'s art style, and I honestly thought this was a weaker version of things we've seen from him. Uh, it felt not very detailed because it's such a massive book, and he was drawing uh, most of this issue. Uh, and because of that, it got me out of this, the story. And also going into this being such a big book and being really the full story being the main story, uh, it, it didn't have to be as many pages as it was. It, it was very prolonged. It, it took a while to get to the point. But the point at the end was actually interesting. We do get to see Mr. Fantastic has this long lost sister uh, that's all connected to his father and King and, and we, we get some story developments there. And I'm interested to see where that's gonna go, but I do hope it's a different art style and is paced a little better in the future. So giving that one two stars, I am interested in the future of the series, but I just thought the execution for this issue could have been stronger. Moving into number 14 for me, and that is Iron Man, issue 12, a book I think I'm going to finally drop. I really loved the first couple of issues of this book and was really uh, holding on to it because I like Patsy as a character, and I also like uh, her potential relationship with Iron Man, but it's been a while since they've interacted with each other, and I just don't quite care about the plot anymore. It's just been very prolonged. Um... And I really don't know what direction this book is going in anymore. And I just haven't really enjoyed it in the past couple issues. Which is kind of conflicting for me because I really love the artwork for this book. And I just wish the plot was a bit stronger and, and the book had a bit more of a direction. Maybe if there's a new arc that shows up that has promise, I'll put it back on my pull list. But for now, I think I am dropping Iron Man and giving that two stars. So that is number 14. Moving on to number 13 which is Kang the Conqueror. You know, we just talked about Kang with Fantastic Four. I liked the first issue of Kang. I actually thought it was very solid, but it felt more like a one-shot issue. I enjoyed it as a one-off. Did we need uh, five more issues of this? I don't think so, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. This issue uh, kind of deals with a lot of the similar stuff that happened in issue one with Kang's romance and obviously uh, his young um, uh, Iron Lad's... Uh, uh, relationship with himself. So that that was interesting. I'm still kind of curious to see where that's going to go. Uh, but I don't know if I'm curious enough to pick up the next issue. I, I, you know, I'm not a huge Kang fan. I do like Young Avengers, but, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge Iron Lad fan uh, as an individual. I like him more in the team. So I don't know if I'm going to pick up the next issue. Also, the artwork, I feel like, could be a little stronger for this book. But it's still a, a solid series. I think it's more of like, it's not my cup of tea. And it might be just a bit too long uh, for me. I've never been a huge Kang fan, but I, you know, I think this is a well-deserving series for people that do like the character. Uh, so I'm giving that two and a half stars and then it's number 13. Moving on to number 12, which is Marauders issue 24. I thought the story was a bit stronger than we've been getting for this series. I love Emma and Kitty. I love their interaction. The, the action in this issue was really good and them just teaming up. That was definitely the biggest highlight. Them actually going into space was fine. The plot was fine and, and the characters they are interacting with. But I kind of wish there was more callbacks to Kitty, her time in space and her time with the Guardians of the Galaxy and as Star-Lord. We didn't really get that is very much about Krakoa. Uh, and I still feel like the plot's kind of stalling a little bit. But at least we got some good character interactions. The artwork... Felt a little stiff to me. I usually do like Noto's artwork and I, I love his coloring and, and that style. 
but I I didn't really love the line work here. I thought it was uh, very stiff, a lot of the characters. Uh, even the action, I think, that could have been placed a little better. Uh, but overall, I thought this was a stronger issue than we've been getting, but not as strong as the series had been, let's say, 10 issues ago. So giving that three stars, and that is number 13. Moving on to number... Uh, I'm sorry, that was number 12. Moving on to number 11 which is The Mighty Valkyries, issue five, which is the, the last issue of this miniseries. Uh, you know, disappointing because I, I love Valkyrie. I love uh, getting Jane Foster on a, a monthly basis. But at the end of the, of the book, it does say we're going to get more of the Valkyries, so hopefully we'll get an announcement of that soon. Uh, you know, I didn't love the main plot of this, which had to do with the, the babies, and that's definitely a big part of this issue. But I love the art, especially as like a final battle I thought was really good and I love Jane you know I love uh her voice and that really made the issue for me even her conflict of what to do with the babies at the end of the issue I don't know if we really got a revelation of that or um a, a resolution for that I'm sorry uh so hopefully we do where, wherever we see her but it seemed like is she gonna take care of the kids I don't know uh but I I like Jane here I liked her interaction with the other Valkyrie Rena Runa uh, so overall, I thought it was an okay issue. Uh, you know, I enjoyed some of the character moments, but the uh, overarching plot uh, hadn't been my favorite from the beginning. So giving that three stars, and that is number 11. Moving on to number 10, which is Power Rangers, issue 11. And this one, uh, delving a little deeper into the mythology once again, there's definitely some connective tissue to the other series, Mighty Morphin, especially with the grander plan of Zordon's people. And uh, we definitely dig into that a little bit deeper here, which was fun. I, you know, I'm not, as, I'm not as, much, as much of a fan as the mythology digging aspect of this book so uh, you know I, I love the character moments a little bit more and I, I do think we do get character moments but because it focuses so much on the mythology it definitely is leaning more towards that but there's some good Lord Draken moments in this uh in this issue as we get to see him become Lord Draken again and what does that mean for the team and what does this mean for the overarching arc uh, so overall I had a fun time with this one I love the artwork I think that it really works well with the potential slice of life storylines that Power Rangers does have with the very uh, space story it's being told here. Some really clean uh, line work here. So giving that three stars and that is number 10. Actually, I gave that three and a half stars. So that's number 10, three and a half stars. Moving on to number nine, which is Batman Urban Legends issue seven. And I like that this this book was very cohesive. Uh, so we get all these future storylines, like Damien is Batman in one. We have Batman One Million, Batman Beyond. We get a Cassandra Kane story as well, Future State story. So I like that everything felt uh, connected, which you don't normally get in anthology books. And the one I actually enjoyed the most was Batman Beyond. I'm usually not a huge Batman Beyond fan. I don't know if this convinced me to get the series, but I, I enjoyed it as a one-shot story, a good prelude, prelude story to the next series, as it has to do with Terry's relationship with Bruce and Bruce's relationship to Batman. And I just thought it was a really well-done emotional story. And uh, I thought it hit home a lot of the themes that Batman Beyond has done in the past. Uh, and then the other stories were a lot of fun as well and had some good emotions. Uh, nothing that blew my mind this issue like previous series have, uh, like Jason Todd and, and Tim Drake, but uh, I thought they are all solid stories. And, and this book continues to be something worthwhile to have on your pull list because it has to do with other Batman titles or, or characters you normally wouldn't get to see. And it feels like a very unique anthology in that way where they're not just one-off stories. They do have a lot of connective tissue. So I'm giving that three and a half stars and that is number nine. Moving on to number eight. And that is a new, uh, new title I was very excited for. And that is Titans United issue one. And if you are missing old school Teen Titans fun, that's exactly what this issue is. Very clean artwork here. It's very much an action issue of these D-list villains getting a lot of great powers. Kite Man shows up in the end of the issue, uh, and it is very based on the TV show Titans. So that was actually why this is a little lower, because I don't quite understand 
what this series is. Like, where is it connected to? Is it supposed to be connected to the TV show? Is it just utilizing the characters of the TV show? Is this happening in continuity? I was a little confused by that. But as just a fun Teen Titans story, it worked. I liked the energy between all the characters. The, the chemistry was really good. The action was good. And especially because Titans Academy is just so different and we really haven't had a classic Titans book in a while. It was just a nice breath of fresh air with uh, definitely an interesting plot to see where, where this goes with these D-list villains. So good setup, good character work, and, and that's all you could really ask for for uh, an issue one. So I gave that three and a half stars, and that is number eight. Moving on to number seven, which is the Joker issue seven. And this is thankfully a lot higher than the Joker has been on the list. I thought this issue really picked things up. Uh, honestly, mostly with the supporting characters. I love the opener with, uh, with uh, Julia... Pennyworth, a very, very James Bond aspect. At first, I'm like, okay, who is this again? Like, like which character is this? Just because of the art style. Uh, but then, you know, they actually do say, say her name. Like, oh, it's Julia. That that makes sense. Because they kept saying, like, the daughter. I'm like, oh, who has a daughter again? Uh, so, but I like the opener. I thought that the spy aspect really worked there. Uh, there's some really good Barbara moments here. And I would say Batgirls moments in general. Uh, especially Cassandra has a really good action piece in here. And them just all interacting with each other was a lot of fun. I would say the weakest part of this book is probably James Gordon in this issue. Uh, it's very very talky what he's doing but at least in the end uh we do get to see him interact with the the lady bane character that's been secretly uh hiding in the shadows and and we do get some of the mystery of that woman uh and i guess her connection to the court of owls uh, a little further in this issue as well so overall i thought this issue moved a little better than previous issues still not a huge fan of the art style but i, I do think there are some good plot points here even if james was not the highlight of his own book. So uh, I'm, I'm going to give that one four stars, and that is number seven. Moving on to number six, which is Black Widow, issue 11. Uh, a really, really solid issue. Uh, great artwork. I do believe this is a different artist than we normally get, but really fits the style of the previous artist. And uh, you know, I think it, it had a well balance of everything. We're introducing a new arc with these twin characters which was a lot of fun their their power set was really cool where they get to like shift masses so they then one could be super strong and then the other weak and then vice versa so that was a really cool action piece uh it is still attached to that previous villain who i don't quite care about but i like the the teens i like them you know I, I i'm still a little weary on the the new character i forget her name uh the one with the the powers uh just because i i haven't really seen her shine but i really liked her uh her relationship with arana um or anya so i, I enjoyed that so i thought that was cool and then honestly a big highlight is uh white widow and and black widow and their relationship and their uh search for trust in in each other so Obviously, I, I just thought it was a really well-balanced issue with a lot going on. We also even get some continuation of Black Widow's family, where they're at, where Black Widow is emotionally with all of that. Uh, so yeah, I, I thought this was a good first part to the arc for sure. So overall, giving this four stars, and that is number six. Moving on to number five. I was a little disappointed to see this uh, as number five because I thought this was going to be pick of the week. But it's Harley Quinn, the animated series. I'm not reading the whole entire title. Uh, but it's actually a continuation uh, from season two. And I love Harley Quinn. It's my favorite show on right now. It is so good. It is so funny. And honestly, I think it, it kind of ranks as high as uh, Batman the Anime series for me, even though it's a very different show. I think it uses the, the mythos of Batman so, so well. Uh, and it's it's just such a character driven show and I feel like this one uh it, it had definitely hints to the television show obviously it's based on the show but I meant um tonally right like character wise like I you know I like that Harley broke the fourth while a wall I think there's some good jokes there their romance is really good in this like you know we definitely get to see a lot of their romance which is so great because uh there hasn't been a lot of comics where we we really get to see them together romantically so that that was definitely a highlight of the issue but I feel like um Poison Ivy's uh, 
a dryness wasn't showcased as much here. Maybe because you're not hearing a voice actor uh, say the lines, but I, I felt like she felt a little off in this, and I, I wanted the humor to really hit home a little bit further, uh, like the, the the TV show does, and maybe add a little bit more character flair here. It, it was very much describing of, okay, what happened in the show. There wasn't a, a lot of big character moments, but the ones we got did shine. Like, I really enjoyed Poison Ivy mentally dealing with uh, leaving Kite Man on the altar, everyone finding out about it. Uh, you also have a great action romp with just Jim trying to to get them and arrest them. Uh, and, and you do get some really good moments between Harley and Poison Ivy. Uh, it's just that I put the show on such a high pedestal and I don't know if that completely transitioned into this book, but I think it was definitely close enough and the artwork was so good for this too. A lot of fun. Uh, and I'm, I'm very much looking forward to seeing where the series goes. So I'm giving that four stars and that is my number five pick. Moving on to number four. And that's Fantastic Four Life Story Issue 4. And uh, this is in the point of view of a thing. And you definitely get some good uh, emotions here for sure. Where the thing um, is looking for love uh, and finds Alicia. So that was, that was nice. But also dealing with kind of losing his uh, friend with Reed because he's always so busy and, and definitely losing Johnny and, and Sue dealing with that as well and, and their lives all transitioning in different ways where Franklin's getting married and obviously the big story of Galactus is going to hit Earth and, and how that's affecting the Fantastic Four but how that's affecting Ben especially and I just really liked his voice here. I really liked the narration of Ben and overall just been really liking this series. I, I really like the takes that Life Story has done thus far with Fantastic Four, with Spider-Man, and I think it's just such a genuinely great idea and um, some great commentary here for a franchise and also just history in general. So overall, giving that four stars, and that is number four. Moving on to number three, another Mark Russell book, and that is Second Coming, Only Begotten Son, issue uh, five. And this is the penultimate of the finale for this chapter. I don't think the book is ending, but we are getting a season finale and I'm guessing a bit of a hiatus. And man, this book is so good. I just love, I love the commentary. I love the, the sarcasm, but at the same time, there's just such depth to this book and, and so much, um, philosophy in this book, obviously, because it is a book about religion. And with this one, we, we really dig into what is heaven, and, and we literally get to see what happens when you die. And, and in this version of heaven, it's not that great, you know? It's not this promised land that uh, everyone thinks it is. It's just, you know, a place that God puts you, uh, because there's no other room to put you, and, and that's exactly where you're going to be. And, and seeing how uh, the, the people who have died deal with that. And then you kind of have this uh, bigger idea of like, what does a god do? What is a god? And and are they perfect? And and that's a question that we get to see with God himself, with, with Jesus, and then also with our superhero, as he asks that question as well of, of, of being this grander being. Uh, and it's just a really interesting issue. And I, I love this book and I love the commentary that it ends up having. And the artwork is so good for this book as well. Uh, just a lot of fun. Uh, it's just such a funny book. So giving that uh, four and a half stars, I believe I gave that, and that is number three. Moving on to number two, uh, the, you know, my not my top three, they're they're all really, really, really good books. It was, it was hard to choose, but my, my number two is Seven Secrets, issue 12. A lot happens in this issue uh, with the, the story where we get to see the, the origins of Amon, the origins of the villain, where you, you kind of feel for the guy. You know, maybe this this Seven Secrets organization is not a great place, and 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 maybe you know we we really get to see that between Amon and his uh, his loved one, um, his partner, where he had to watch his his partner's face burn, uh, burn off, and then Amon's like, I don't want to be here anymore, and so and and then also the idea that you have to love a, a case more than you love uh, you no know, a person. Uh, is really, really fascinating. And then on the flip side, we're still seeing the action from the Seven Secrets organization, learning a bit more about Casper, seeing that he's probably going to die soon. So there's just a lot of great plot progression, but a lot of good character moments here where you're like, who is the right person? Who is the villain of this story? Is there a villain of this story? As you get this bombastic anime style uh, action uh, laced throughout the whole entire issue. So uh, very well done. Four and a half stars for me. Love this book. And uh, it's really ramping up to some interesting stuff here. So moving on to number one, 
which is Spider Woman issue 15. And and this issue, uh, this is just everything I love about this series wrapped into one. You get a lot of great humor, which Carla is always so good at adding here. But you also have some great action uh, between the babysitter, between Jessica, between the villains. But then most importantly, you get this really interesting family dynamic. We learn a lot about Jessica's niece and, and really learn how, you know, she was born, you know, her, her power, I guess, power set. Uh, but also also something I thought that was so important is that, you know, everyone's trying to cure her of her disability. And she's like, no, I don't want to be cured of this. This is who I am. And I don't need people to help me. You know, I, I am my own uh, person. And I thought that was just such a powerful story. And then we get to see her in a suit. So maybe she'll become a spider person of some way. Because I don't think we know if she has powers or not. We just know that uh, she's being affected by the radiation. So I'm curious to see where that's going to go as well. But I just thought that the story was really well done. And the connection between Jessica and her niece and, and even uh, her brother uh, was really well done here too. Uh, and and uh, we got an interesting villain as well who is very similar to Jessica but been able to control uh, women. And, and they're trying to figure that out and, and why and how that's happening. And I thought that was a really interesting concept as well. Uh, so just a really well-balanced issue that gives such promise to the the future of this series, which is why uh, I made it my pick of the week. So uh, I give that four and a half stars. That is my pick of the week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is Comic Uno. And the viewer's pick of the week from last week was May's book issue one. And here are some comments about that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.